Hello everyone, this is Dalster and welcome to another episode review of Dark Side the Ring and in today's video I will summarize part 2 of the Chris Benoit episode. Trigger warning as this episode contains murder and one person unaliving themselves. This episode also features descriptions of a child being murdered. So if you are very sensitive to a description of a child getting murdered, don't watch it. For part 2, it talks about the aftermath of Chris and his family's deaths. How it happened, how it affected WWE, and the trauma that his other son David faced. When I first watched it, it was a tearjerker seeing Chris's son David and Nancy's sister Sandra pour out their emotions of this awful murder. So let's get into the murder scene and where it happened. Also, I'm going to call the three Chris's by their last name just so there is no confusion since this episode has a lot of Chris's. Chris Benoit and his family Nancy and Daniel were living in Fayette County, Georgia. The area is known to have a family atmosphere with less crime before the murders. Larry, who was working in the Fayette County Sheriff's Office as a lieutenant, said that he would see Chris at the gym and was a very quiet man. He would end up being one of the lieutenants showing up to Chris's house on the day the murders happened. You can hear in the beginning of the episode of a call being made from WWE. The WWE wanted to do a welfare check on Chris Benoit because he had not shown up for the pay-per-view that he was scheduled for Sunday of that week. At the time, it was out of character as Chris would always show up for work. Larry then goes to the Benoit house and asks a neighbor if they have seen Chris, but the neighbor said that she had not seen Chris for three to four days. As Larry and the other police were going into the house, they saw Chris's dogs. As Chavo said in the previous episode how he received a text from Chris's phone saying that the dogs were in the gate or something. The neighbor jumped out of the fence to take the dogs inside the house, and as she went in, Larry said in the episode that she took a long while. She came out of the house running scared and screamed, Daniel's dead! The welfare check that Larry was assigned to do ended up being a lot more serious. So they went inside the Benoit house and Larry said that inside of the house had a smelly odor. When Larry and the police went upstairs to Daniel's room, his body was in the bed, face down. Daniel had unfortunately passed away. They then went to another room and found Nancy's corpse wrapped around a blanket. The police then go downstairs to Chris's gym. In Chris's gym, there were mirrors and the police thought that Chris was still alive as it looked like he was standing, but his lifeless body was hanging from a machine with cables around his neck. After the police realized that the Benoit house could be a murder scene, Chris Jericho gets a call from one of the WWE writers saying that Benoit had died causing Jericho to cry. WWE did not know the full details of the murder-suicide yet, as they were informed that Chris, Nancy, and Daniel had perished. They did a three-hour tribute show for Benoit, as it was supposed to be a three-hour show for Vince McMahon's character, Mr. McMahon, as the previous episode of Raw from the week before, the murders had Mr. McMahon die of an explosion. A couple hours after the tribute show, WWE was informed on the murder-suicide. Jericho said in the episode that he refused to come to the tribute show as he felt very sad for what happened to Benoit and his family. Jim Ross said that WWE did not know the full details until after the tribute show. In the tribute show, wrestlers were praising and mourning the loss of Chris Benoit and his family. Jericho said that William Rico's words were revealing. During that time period, Rico lived in the same area as Chris Benoit and he also knew of Chris's fights with Nancy. Sandra said that she went to the mall since her sister Nancy had told her to do so around the time of the murders. After Sandra left the theater, her parents tried to call her as she had 22 missed calls. Her parents had told her to go to her house so they could tell her the news. They told her that Nancy had died. Sandra said that she had to go to the hospital and get sedated. David said that he found out when he and his mother went to the police station. He saw his mom crying and knew that his father, stepmom, and little brother were gone. A cop told David that Chris and his family had passed away on the weekend, and David then punches the cop in the chest. The cop walked with David in order to try to calm him down and told him that his family loved him. News stations were all on this case as more details started to come out. The situation with the Benoit family ended up being a double murder-suicide. Evidence showed that it was a brutal, vicious murder with real rage. 
Matthew, who is the author of Ring of Hell, theorized that on the weekend of the murders, Chris had a barbecue and that there was some sort of altercation between Chris and Nancy. Supposedly, Chris restrained Nancy with duct tape and then used a telephone cord to strangle Nancy to death, followed by putting a Bible next to her body. There were beer cans and wine bottles in the trash can that probably meant that Chris was drinking on the weekend of the murders. The following Saturday morning, Chris gave Daniel Xanax and was murdered while he was unconscious. Another Bible was put next to Daniel. Chris then made a phone call to a friend, possibly Chavo, telling them that Nancy and Daniel had a stomach virus and had to be taken to the hospital. On Sunday, Chris looked up some creepy stuff on the computer. Not sure what it was, but Matthew said that Chris's searches were chilling. He looked up a prophet of Elijah and the resurrection of a dead boy, as well as how to break one's own neck in the most painless way. Chris then went to the home gym with a half-drunk bottle of wine. Then he goes to his lap pull-down machine and takes off the bar. He took the metal cord from the machine and wrapped the towel and the metal cord around his neck. Chris had the weights put on 240 pounds. After that, he releases the weights and dies. In the investigation, detectives found a knife under Daniel's bed. However, he was suffocated to death by Chris. Nancy was dead for two days before Chris. Chris had another Bible around the house that contained a suicide note. In the note, it said that Chris was preparing to leave this earth. Julie, wife of Dean Malenko, heard that Chris put his knee on Nancy's back and broke it. She thinks that what Chris did was unfathomable, meaning not understandable. Dean said it, that it sounded like a horror movie. We then see in an old video from an episode of ECW the day after the Benoit tribute show on Raw, where Vince explained that WWE has been informed with more information on the case. Vince said that there will be no mention of Chris Benoit as the company decided to erase Chris from wrestling and anything involving his name. Vicky said that the employees and wrestlers were told not to talk about Chris Benoit and the incident. Jim Ross said in the episode that he went to Nancy and Daniel's funeral as a representative for WWE. Sandra said that she was not happy about JR being there and told him to get out as she felt that him being there was all a work. JR said that he felt like the most unwanted person at the funeral because he was a Dodai guy back then. Vicky said that she did not go to Chris's funeral because she was still angry at Chris back then. David said that the funeral for Chris was private and that it hit him hard that his dad, stepmom, and little brother were all gone. After the deaths of the Benoit family, Sandra said that no one in the wrestling business provided care for her and her family. For David, the only people in the WWE that were there for him were Chris Jericho and Chavo Guerrero. David said that WWE can go screw themselves as they treated him like he was non-existent. After his dad's death, David said that he couldn't watch TV and wrestling. He calls it the darkest time of his life. The mainstream media was all over this case for months as CNN covered it with interviews from Vince McMahon, Bret Hart, Hulk Hogan, Chris Jericho, and John Cena. CNN even did a documentary called Death Grip, which was about Chris Benoit's steroid abuse, his influence on Dynamite Kid, Dynamite Kid being abusive towards his wife, and interviews with wrestlers who dealt with concussion issues, one of them being the late Chris Canyon. Dean recalls getting a call from Chris's father, Michael, and telling Dean why. The media portrayed the murders as a roid rage incident. Months before the murders, Nancy said that she knew Chris was abusing steroids and was getting tired of it, as shown in the text messages that are seen in this episode. It seemed like Chris was angry and violent towards his wife, Nancy, as told by their family and friends. After Eddie's death, the WWE's drug testing was very strict. Jericho said that the drug policy was so strict that you needed a prescription to take aspirin. Chris Benoit supposedly passed a wellness test even though he was taking 10 times the amount of testosterone. However, in Chris's autopsy, he had a lot of testosterone. WWE denied that steroid abuse had anything to do with the murders. Jericho said that Benoit and Nancy would have fights and arguments when they were still alive. Nancy would call Vicky and tell her that she and Chris were fighting and that one time Nancy told Vicky through the phone that Chris had broken a window. 
Sandra said that she got a call from her sister Nancy one day saying that Chris had hurt her. She didn't go into further detail as Sandra was worried for Chris's kids. Chris Nowinski, who became a neuroscientist after getting concussions in Dodoe as he used to be a wrestler there, examined Benoit's brain. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, is a progressive degenerative brain disease that appears to be started by getting hits to the head. Nowinski said that there were four cases of CTE back then from four football players. Three died by suicide and one started hearing voices in his head. Benoit was actually interested in Nowinski's studies as Nowinski was writing a book on the brain. Nowinski called Benoit one day, but Benoit was busy and seemed agitated through the phone as Nowinski tried to describe it. Michael had given Nowinski permission to look into Benoit's brain. In Benoit's brain, they found tau protein, which is a marker or dark spikes of some sort that point out brain damage. Benoit had large spiky marks in his brain, which was not normal for a man his age. His brain had changed the way he behaved after getting hit so many times in the head. Vicky said that Chris would cry a lot when they talked that she wondered if that was one of the symptoms for the CTE. Jericho said that the chair shots to the head in the 90s were considered a badge of honor in wrestling and that you have to take it. He also said that you shake off your concussions and move forward after that. Dynamite Kid was one of Chris's influences as Dynamite Kid did the playing headbutt but eventually landed himself into a wheelchair through the remainder of his life. Chavo still considers Chris Benoit his friend and brother but hates what Chris did. Dean still has hate for Chris because of him murdering his family and said that he has tried to separate the art from the artist. Chris's family and friends still wonder why he would do it and what got him to that point. David said that he got bullied because of Chris's actions, but he still considers his dad a hero and that Nancy deserves more recognition. Minutes until the end of the episode, Julie, Chris Jericho, and Vicky believe that Nancy should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Sandra said that she tried to have a relationship with the surviving Benoit family members but was told that the kids did not want anything to do with her and Nancy's family. Even the Benoit family were told that Sandra and the Toffolini family supposedly didn't want anything to do with them but it turned out to be false. David cries in this episode at the end as Chavo and Sandra comfort him. Jericho thinks that Chris's family were blackballed from the world because of Benoit's actions. He was able to get David and Sandra to reconnect and the two of them were seen going to a wrestling event together. Sandra thinks that someday she might forgive Chris. Benoit as carrying so much hate can wear you down. Interviewers for this episode are Larry Alton, Fayette, County Sheriff's Office employee and former lieutenant, Chris Jericho, Chavo Guerrero, Jim Ross, Dean Malenko, David Benoit, Chris's son, Sandra Tofolini, Matthew Randazzo V, author of Ring of Hell, Julie Malenko, wife of Dean, Vicky Guerrero, and Chris Nowinski, former WWE wrestler and neuroscientist. This was an intense episode after seeing everyone who was interviewed pour out their feelings while talking about the Benoit family and how the situation has affected them for so long. I give this episode a 9.5 out of 10 since they didn't talk about the Wikipedia situation. What happened with the Wikipedia situation is that a guy named Matthew Greenberg, who was 19 at that time, put on Wikipedia that Nancy had died before the police discovered the bodies of her, Chris, and Daniel. The Wikipedia page also said that Chris Benoit was replaced by Johnny Nitro for the pay-per-view Vengeance. Nancy's death was put at 4.01 a.m. EDT on Wikipedia in the day of June 25th, but the Fayette police didn't find the bodies until 2.30 p.m. EDT, which is 10 hours and 29 minutes after the 4.01 a.m. time. They located the IP address in Stanford, Connecticut, which I remember the WWE headquarters was there at the time. Once WWE and mainstream media received the news that Chris, Nancy, and Daniel were actually dead, Greenberg thought that it was a huge coincidence. The police took the computer of Greenberg in order to investigate, but they found nothing concerning and decided not to press charges on Matthew. Greenberg said that he found the rumors online. However, his IP address where he made the edit was tentatively traced to vandalizing other Wikipedia entries. I think it was a coincidence, or maybe Matthew might have had some information from the WWE. 
On YouTube, they said that allegedly Chavo Guerrero might have sent Matthew the text, but it's probably a rumor. Although, I have seen thumbnails on YouTube showing that Vince McMahon might have sacrificed Chris, Nancy, and Daniel ever since Vince's allegations came out this year. I have been hearing about sacrifices in Hollywood, but I'm not one to know much about that. As of today, Chris Jericho is currently in AEW and got cancelled recently after he allegedly made a pass on Kylie Ray when he got her in a room alone. Rumors also said that Chris Jericho had NDAs and was probably the reason why Kylie Ray left. No, wait, Kylie Ray actually responded to a tweet that was saying why she had left AEW with a heart. Months after the situation, Jericho received chants from the audience as they yelled for him to retire. Even though I admire Chris Jericho for getting David and Sandra back together as a family, I do have some questions as to what kind of NDAs he might have had. He hasn't been doing so great as I heard people in the comment section saying that his wrestling has gotten worse. I honestly hope it's not true that he has NDAs because Jericho seems like a really nice and chill guy. But if it is true, then I'm going to have to lose respect for him. What do you guys think? Sandra was in a podcast episode after the Dark Side of the Ring episode aired. For Chris's show, Talk is Jericho. She had gotten into a disagreement with TNA Impact wrestler Jordan Grace because Grace made comments on social media that Chris Benoit is in hell. Grace then had a talk with Jericho, David, and Chavo and has since apologized for her comments. Sandra said that she has made peace with Grace's apology. As of now, Sandra posts on social media daily about her sister Nancy so that she can keep her sister's memory alive. And she's also a Paul Heyman fan too. Sandra and David still attend wrestling events. As for David, he recently met former WWE star Edge, who is now in the AEW as Adam Copeland, his real name. He has not seen Adam for more than 13 years. David is also close friends with WWE's Natalia and her husband, Tyson Kidd. To this day, he still wants to be a wrestler and hopes that his father, Chris, goes into the Hall of Fame. David also attends AEW events and has had some interactions with his father's co-workers from his wrestling days. Chavo Guerrero supported his niece Sherilyn after she released a TikTok video saying that Vicky's current husband Chris had allegedly touched her inappropriately. He has not talked to Vicky in years and believes that Sherilyn is telling the truth. As of today, Chavo is no longer wrestling full-time but recently played the Iron Sheik in the movie The Iron Claw. Since The Iron Claw, Chavo wants to direct a movie and is in talks for a Guerrero project. Vicky has deleted all of her social media since the allegations and her contract with AEW had ended in 2023. As of today, she has a travel agency Instagram account which promotes traveling. Dean Malenko unfortunately has Parkinson's disease and had undergone brain surgery in 2023. He currently works in AEW. Jim Ross currently works in AEW as well and has had some health issues over the years. He has since released a book and is cancer free. JR hopes to one day commentate with his old co-worker Jerry Lawler someday and that there should be a physical WWE Hall of Fame. As for this episode, it has been almost 5 years and some things have changed for a majority of the people who were interviewed. It's too bad about Chris Jericho, but we'll see what happens if more comes out about him. I might get hate for this, but I hope that David, his sister, and Sandra got some closure for this episode, as it gave me a lot of closure since it aired. I remember the day when I heard that Chris, his wife Nancy, and their son Daniel had died. It was very intense and emotional. It's one of those days you remember, such as 9-11, where you were and what time of day it was. I think it was evening that I was on my dad's desktop computer and went to WWE.com, which was the only way you can see spoilers before the pay-per-view ends, or if you had TV only, you would have to find out the next day. Much like Eddie Guerrero's death, the first thing you see front and center was that Chris Benoit and his family had died. At first I thought it was his entire family, such as his siblings, if he had any, his parents, and anyone else in the family because around that time, I started watching Naruto and one of the main characters' entire family were killed except him and his brother. I remember screaming, what? But in a surprise, not so sad way. My brothers who were very young, I think 10 and under, were surprised as well. The youngest one had not even turned one yet. Then vengeance happened and Chris was replaced by Johnny Nitro and 
won the ECW world title, which I was not happy about back then. Also, Benoit was supposed to win that title. Then Monday night came, and Raw aired a tribute show for Chris, just like they did for Eddie, but three hours instead of two. Originally, it was for Vince's character, Mr. McMahon's death, but I sort of knew that McMahon wasn't really dead. It was a sad but nice tribute show with no wrestling, which was odd since when they did the Eddie Guerrero tribute show, they had some matches. Looking at it now, I could understand why the wrestlers didn't wrestle. If I were a wrestler and had someone close to me die, I don't think I would have the energy to wrestle either. I rewatched whatever of the tribute show that I could find, as sadly, YouTube has taken the entire episode down, as it used to be there for a very long time. The next day, news stations talked more about Chris Benoit and his family, which I was shocked about because there was a lot more awareness to it than Eddie's death. I remember WWE.com released a statement that they will not talk about it and will move forward. Which I was like, what? Then ECW was on the next day after Monday Night Raw, which at the time was around 9pm, for I think about 2 hours. All of a sudden, the first thing I see was Vince in a plain background, as if he were in a room explaining that there will be no mention of Chris Benoit, and that WWE was heading towards a new direction now. That they were informed on further details of the murder-suicide. It was weird since Vince hardly showed up to ECW except that period of time when he won the ECW title. From there, they stopped talking about Chris, Nancy, and Daniel, and the only channels that talked about them were news channels, mostly CNN. Around that time, I had just finished junior high school and me and my mom were talking about what could have happened and why it happened. I remember going to the Food for Less supermarket with my family and in one of the aisles there was a magazine and in the front cover was Chris, Nancy, and Daniel with a duct tape around their house. Pretty much like every magazine cover you see when you're at a supermarket or at a store. Whenever I surfed channels, I would watch anything that had Chris Benoit or mentioned him just to know what exactly happened and why he did it. I remember that CNN special they had where Hulk Hogan, Bret Hart, John Cena, and Chris Jericho were being interviewed about the situation. From there, they did another special called Death Grip where I saw the Dynamite Kid in a wheelchair being interviewed and the late Chris Canyon, who would sadly die a couple years after that. I think it's still on YouTube and that Michael Benoit, Chris's father, was in there as well. For years, I was looking to see if there were any new updates, and then there was Chris Nowinski showing a picture of Chris Benoit's brain. I did go on YouTube and saw a video of Benoit's house. One of them, I can't remember who it was, but they managed to get a rock from the outside of the house and kept it. I can't remember who... But I heard someone say that the people who lived at the house after Benoit and his family were gone could hear voices in the house. They probably had different owners over the years, I'm pretty sure of it. This double murder-suicide was one of the darkest things that ever happened in WWE, and to the fans as well. I think this caused WWE to get into the PG era, which wasn't my favorite era as it was kind of boring and weird. Chris Benoit has a career that should be in the Hall of Fame, but I understand why WWE won't let him in because of the murders and to not let it ruin the company. However, I do think that if Chris won't be in it, other people should also not be in it, such as Sonny, Jimmy Snuka, and that one guy who recently murdered his wife. I do think Nancy should be in the Hall of Fame, as she has not only managed Kevin Sullivan, but others such as Chris Benoit, Ric Flair, Sandman, and many more. I do wish the best for David, Sandra, and Chris's daughter, but thank you guys for watching this video and thank you for being patient. I know I haven't been online much, I've been taking a little bit of a break on YouTube, but I'm glad to be back. Take care of your mental health and everyone around you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to, and until next time. Bye guys.